Hi, my name is Ashley and I am currently a MSN student second semester at Johns Hopkins University um, for the MSN nursing program. Um, this is my second semester. It, I just got done with finals and that was definitely hectic. Like I'm so blessed that it's over. But today's video is going to actually focus on uh, what makes Johns Hopkins nursing program stand out from other nursing programs and if it's worth going there and if it's worth being in debt and all that other stuff. Um, these are super important questions and I asked all these questions before moving and made this big decision um, beforehand and I would love to share it with you guys. <laughs> Johns Hopkins Masters of Science and Nursing program have to offer. We actually go through, you know, the basic skills of nursing, right? So what what RNs know and what RNs learn in their bachelor's program, we learn that as well in the Masters of Entry program. Because mind you, this is a program where um, it's entry level. So I had my bachelor's degree in, in kinesiology, right? Some people had their degrees in art. Some people had their degrees in law. Like this was during the time where like we didn't really know what we wanted to do. So this is like almost like a second chance. If you want to go into nursing and you got a degree in something else. So that's the really cool part about um, Hopkins as well. cool thing about Hopkins is that they do sim labs and what this is is that they get live actors live actors <laughs> live actresses they hire them it's super nerve-wracking oh my god but it's really really cool how they do this so so they put us in a room right and it's all set up it looks exactly like a hospital and you go in there with another partner like maybe another classmate right and uh, you guys go in there together. They give you like a scenario beforehand. They give you like the, some, some patient background history of what may be going on with them. And um, they kind of prepare you as much as possible. They don't tell you how it's going to end because that's our job as nurses, right? As nurses to kind of figure it out ourselves and do some problem solving and critical thinking. In a, in a very challenging environment. It's kind of nerve wracking, but it's also in a safe environment because they're actors and actresses and we can't kill them. <laughs> so um, they put you in this room that looks exactly like, you know, a hospital. Um, and then, so we are also on the cam on, on camera. So we are getting recorded and that recording is getting sent back to a different room where all of our other classmates in our clinical are watching us and it's so interesting because you know there's like five nursing students in a room that are watching you on a screen you know and that are like looking at you during this whole entire process while you while you deal with this stressful moment and you know your patient is on the floor or something like that and you walk in and your patient's on the floor and you're just like oh my god how do i deal with this situation let's think and work together while people are looking at you and being judged you know it's it's, it's a lot and you know our, our professor you know she's also in the room our clinical instructor sorry she's also in the room that's looking at and is looking at us um so but it's all love it's all critical um it's all like positive criticism and things that can help us improve and better ourselves for the next time and as film nurses. So um, it's really interesting because I remember walking into a room, my um, nursing partner and our patient on the floor. You know, this is an actor, but still like she acted pretty dang good. <laughs> so we walk in and she's on the floor, there's poop all over on the toilet. Um, she has poop on her hands and it's just like, oh my God, this is a lot. Like, what do I do in this situation? Why are you guys doing this to us? <laughs> and like, we have to think, we have to get on our, you know, our toes and kind of figure out the situation and find out what's wrong with her. And um, so we do a lot of assessments, you know, we ask her a lot of questions. And anyways, that's, story time for a different for a different time <laughs> but you guys want some more videos on on my sim lab experiences because i have many and they're very frightening 
that I can definitely do that for you guys. <laughs> so you guys gonna be entertained. Another cool thing about Hopkins is that they give you the opportunity to find what you love and find your specialty and find yourself. So that's really cool. Um, there's many opportunities to volunteer. There's many opportunities to do research in the, in the community. Um, whatever your interest niche is, say if you're interested in the Baltimore community or maybe black mothers that have high um, mortality birthing rates, um, if you want to go into HIV, the opioid crisis, if you want to look into global health, there's so many niches that you can like go into that you can do research on and collaborate with, um, with doctors or your professors on, they, they need you. They need us to do this research. So it's really, really great to um, to be in an environment where it's very empowering, uplifting environment where they need the students to be as much as engaged and involved in the community as possible. So that's a very beautiful thing about Hopkins as well. So I'm in this program called Birth Companions. Um, if you guys don't know what that is, it is the opportunity to work with mothers in the Baltimore community. You're assigned a mother, you sign up for a birth. When they actually go through the birthing process, you know, you're there with them the whole entire time from, from maybe when they first get pregnant, probably not that early. Uh, maybe more so like five to six months of their pregnancy all the way to the time that they actually give um, birth, right? So it's great to be with them and give emotional support to our, to our mothers out there that really need it. Um, and then plus doulas, you know, they reduce rates of of um, c-sections it's, it's very important for women to have a doula so that way they can be as knowledgeable and as and have an advocate as much as possible during this process so i think that's a really good opportunity if you're looking into labor and delivery nurse or midwifery or just want to help out the community and some others the overall environment of Hopkins is is very serious. In my first class, right, and we were talking about ethics and everything like that. Yeah, it's really fun. It's it's everyone's really loving, very kind, but it's also very serious. And um, if you aren't serious, maybe you may want to think Hopkins because um, it's a big deal, and they take politics, they take policies, they take information and research, very, very, very important. So um, I would say that it's super serious. And also I think it's very political. Uh, a lot of the professors and nurse and nursing students and staff, um, we have a lot of discussions on policies and what policies are that, that contains a lot of politics. Um, we talk a lot, a lot about like systemic racism, how we can improve the, the community that we live in, and what's really affecting them environmentally, socially, and economically, um, thus burdening them on, on healthcare resources. So I think it's very political in that sense, um, but it, it gets like a little nitty gritty. We get to the bottom of things and we really discuss it and we're not afraid to talk about those topics, which is really important about uh, for being a nurse to be honest, and especially like a, a nurse that's really about their ish. <laughs> Another really cool thing about Hawkins is that our professors are masters in their field that they're teaching us in. So for instance, in pharmacology, this semester, second semester, we had a pharmacist actually, you know, teach us pharmacology, right? And she's been a pharmacist for many, many years and she graduated from Hopkins. Um, you know, our biostatistics professor, she does research and does research in for the cardiovascular community. One of our professors for HIV um, is actually a nurse practitioner and studies HIV and deals with that population in Baltimore. So there's a lot of our professors that that specialize in these areas and then they teach us on that area, which is fantastic compared to other nursing schools where you know, maybe you may have a few teachers that teach 
all of the subjects. You know, they may not have experience in biostats. They may not have experience in, as a pharmacist, right? They may not have experience working with HIV um, population for, for 10 plus years, you know? So to have those professors that are strong and grounded in, in the work that they do and then to teach us, like we're getting the ultimate learning experience, which is fantastic. They teach us to be leaders. They teach us to be accountable. They teach us to be world-renowned um, leaders that will change the healthcare system. We do a lot of practice um, speaking and speech in our classes. I know that in our health promotion course, we did a lot of um, getting in front of the whole entire class to talk. It's super nerve-wracking, but like within time, you kind of get used to it because you do it so often. Um, so that's one thing. We get used to speaking and, and, and being powerful in front of a group of intelligent people to get our point across. The speakers that speak at our school, they also empower us and they educate us to be the best that we can in our field. You know, I've had this one, uh, this one speaker come in and I remember her saying to the whole entire class and she's like, wow. Look at all these amazing, beautiful nurses, future nurses. You know, we need you guys. We need you guys to, you know, buckle down, be knowledgeable, be experts in your field. Um, so that way you guys can change the world that we live in. Like it was so empowering. They lift you up and they, they really want us to be the greatest that we possibly can in our field. And finally, I cannot end this video without talking about COVID-19. How is it like being a nursing student at Johns Hopkins during COVID-19? They've done a, a fantastic job at giving us information and the knowledge that we need um, through the research that's being done at Hopkins as well. In the beginning, when COVID-19 first broke out, it was emails getting sent to us possibly once every two, two days. Um, from from our professor and faculty staff um, consistently just to keep us updated on everything. And, you know, that was extremely helpful, honestly. They transitioned us quite well. They accommodated us quite well. You know, if like we were feeling stressed out, like we could take exams a little bit later. I remember missing class one day right after moving back from um, Baltimore to California because of time difference and I was just beat and I was exhausted and I missed class and they were just like, you know, we understand everything is changing abruptly. And so they accommodated me for it and they, they helped me, you know, get back on track. Hopefully that was very helpful and hopefully um, you guys can formulate maybe some additional questions that you guys can ask me. I'm all open, I'm all ears. If you guys want to see more videos on SimLab stories or um, COVID-19 experiences and how we went through that whole process because it was a large process. <laughs> it was very hectic, I cannot lie. But um, if you guys want more videos on anything I just explained so I can elaborate it on a little bit further. So I hope that this was helpful. Comment below if you guys have any questions. Bye.